Yo, what's poppin' everybody? This is Cerebral Final Four, and we're here today with the Rebellious Clash set. I'm about to review this. This is after VMAX Rising. If I was a guessing man, they're gonna combine this uh, with that set, and probably something else to give us uh, the big one, our big one, uh, Sword and Shield set number two. Anyways, so this one is 96 cards. is a little bit bigger than VMAX Rising, but uh, we'll get through it. So as always, what I do is I review every single card of these uh, Japanese sets. So let's go ahead and start with a Scyther. Uh, it's kind of ironic. Uh, I got the Scyther end here across here. Um, okay, interesting. But okay, Scyther, what do you do? Uh, 80 HP. Okay, I guess it evolves into uh, Scissor now, so can't forget that. Uh, okay, whatever. And uh, you can do 1 for 20 and Sword Stance. Um, okay, it's, it's kind of, it's like, it's trying to model the base set, dude, where you, the sword stands attack, and then you can do the blinding scythe. Uh, but yeah, if you do sword stance, it's going to do 70 more damage, it says. Hmm. Anyway, I mean, I think we should have, like, a few scythers around, uh, Scizor. Scizor GX is going to rotate out. Anyway, we'll see what, what they give us here for Scizor. But, okay, this dude, you got Heracross. Uh, you don't evolve, so what do you do? You do super powered horns, uh, 110 for 3, not that great. 130 HP is still good though. Push down, you may have your opponent switch to active Pokemon. I want a bench part. was a pretty generic dude. We have other good, you know, basic grass Pokemon that don't evolve, you know, just regular ass attackers. If you want regular ass attackers for grass, there's still a lot, a lot of different Pokemon out there. Like there's a Delmise, there's a Buzzwall, there's a bunch of Pokemon. Uh, this dude doesn't seem impressive at all. Uh, you got that 130 HP, but there are other guys that have this. Retreat is not special. Attacks aren't special anyway. Okay, moving on. Uh, you got a loaded Cola line here. Pretty interesting. We got, uh, I wonder if they're going to do like uh, Shift too, because they don't do them together anymore. It's like... I think they give Lodicolo a lot more love, but anyways, we got the low tad. Oh shit! Uh, looks like I clicked a bunch of shit by accident. Anyway, so I got low tad here. Nothing spectacular. Uh, reminded me of Far Cry 2. This art here. Anyway, you got Lombri. Uh, this dude has an ability. You got top entry. When you draw this card at the beginning of your turn, before adding it to your hand. You may put it on the bench. Okay. Um, but it has to be from the beginning of your turn. You can't, like, stack this and then draw this with, uh, like, uh, an acrobike or something. Or not acrobike, but the whistle that lets you draw a card. Stuff like that. But essentially what it does, if you didn't get it, if you draw this at your draw phase, <laughs> draw phase like it's Yu-Gi-Oh! At the beginning of your turn, you can just instantly play this on your bench and... I guess it just helps you get to your Ludicolo faster. So, yeah, you don't have to worry about real candy. And it has Fury Swipes, Flip a Coin Attack. Okay, it could be useful. It's pretty random. It's just, uh, it, it's all about luck. You can't do much to control it. So, I mean, okay, I guess if you get lucky, you got lucky. But, you know, if you're going to have an ability, you know, it open itself, it, it open. Pokemon with abilities, of course, open themselves up to other Pokemon and effects that hate on abilities. And uh, that can be problematic. So if you're going to have a useless ability like this or a very luck-based ability, might as well didn't have anything at all. But this is what we get. And Lodicolo here. It's grass. It's been... How long has it been since I've seen, uh, since I've seen a grass Lodicolo? That's a good question, actually. It's usually water. I think there was a, a grass one in Primal Clash, but okay. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, but then again, <laughs> we're talking about six to five years here. Anyway, so 160 HP, typical stage two, but it's not enough, to be honest. You know, these uh, stage twos need to be like 180, and that even wouldn't be enough with Arceus around. Uh, but anyways, you got Cheerful Rush. This attack does 60 damage for each prize card you have taken. Wow, pretty cool. 
So if you're winning, if you just have taken the three prizes, this does 180 for two. Uh, that's pretty impressive too. Uh, just two colorless, meaning you can use DC or the new twin DC energy on VMAX Ryzen. That's pretty nice. Uh, you gotta take a few prizes, but I mean, it's definitely strong. It's stronger than Salazzle GX's attack, uh, which is pretty cool. Like that. Like that. And Mega Drain, it just does 120 and then you heal 30 damage. This isn't good. It's too bad. I, I wish they. They just gave us another cool attack, but this could be a nice little revenge Pokemon, but I mean, it's a stage two, so, you know, when you're going to use a revenge Pokemon, you kind of want them to be like a basic or a stage one. If you're using another sort of grass deck and you want to tech this in as a revenge dude at the end, being a stage two is a liability, but who knows, maybe... We'll find a way to make it work. It is very interesting for me, as I like stage twos. I mean, if you if you take if you took four prizes, it does like two hundred and forty, I think. Yeah, it, it's pretty tough. I mean, it's gonna kill a lot of Pokemon. You just need to take prizes. I wish it was depending on your opponent's prizes that would have made it more interesting. Okay, not bad. And we got a Surskid and Masquerade line. I think it's been a while since I've seen you guys too. Uh, it just does agility. Okay. And then Masquerade. Got 90 HP. What the hell is that? One retreat. Threatening pattern during your opponent's next turn. The Fenny Pokemon can't have energy attached to it. What? Uh, from your opponent's hand. Okay. I get it. So you do damage too. So you do 30 for one. So decent. And your opponent can't attach energies from their hand to the defending Pokemon. Now, I would imagine this counts for regular attachments and attachments from stuff like, you know, Blastoise, Embor, Ice Moth, Magnezone, you know, ability attachments. So, I think that's what it means. It doesn't say... It, it, I think it covers that, too. So, that that's good, I guess. Um... Is it going to break the format? Probably not. And then you turn 40 and then switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. Okay, so hit and switch. Maybe some people are going to want to use this, but the damage isn't too great. I mean, I guess you can just use the new DC and it can work with one energy. Um, I guess, I mean, we got the Polka Doll, the freaking Lily's, Lily's Polka Doll. Hate that card. So, you never know. Maybe people are going to try try that with this. You got Phantom and Trevenant. I think they've been popping up a lot of these uh, uh, Trevenant cards. I think we got another one recently. Not the GX one, anyway. So, the Phantom. Dark Guidance. Place one Pokemon from your discard pile onto your bench. This, there's no way this is right, right? Uh, place one Pokemon from your discard pile onto your bench. It's got to be basic. There must be some sort of translation here. I don't think it's anything, but who the hell knows? And then Seed Bomb. And then the Trevenant. Uh, looks like this guy doesn't have any fancy abilities. Just a Seed Bomb, one, one for 40 attack. And then Shadow Cage, 120 for 3. And the Fanny Pokemon can retreat, 130 HP. Pretty generic, not really inspiring, and if you're going to give me these generic ass effects that we've seen a billion times by now, give me some decent damage. You know, this is another example of a stage 1 Pokemon that looks pretty okay on paper, doesn't have any drawbacks, but it just won't work. It won't work. This damage is crap. It doesn't threaten anybody. Like, even grass weak Pokemon, like Tag Team GX Pokemon or VMAX Pokemon weak grass, this wouldn't even be able to kill something like Lapras V. Uh, I think I think they were weak to lightning, but it doesn't matter. You guys get the idea. Big ass retreat too. So it it's not great. It's not that great. Too bad. The art is kind of cool. And we got Eldegoss V. Uh, wait a minute. You're gonna give me Eldegoss and not the first form, the cute one. Okay, a bit strange. Uh, Oh, but yeah, it's a V Pokemon. It's not a GX. Yeah, got that confused. Silly me. 
So 180 HP is kind of one of the weaker ones HP wise. One retreat, weakness of fire. You got happy match. Once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand or to your bench, you may put a supporter card of a supporter from your discard pile into your hand. Busted. Busted and good. So not quite Tabulele GX, but a very, very useful effect to have indeed. This is like a VS Seeker and a Pokemon, and everybody's going to welcome it. Trust me. They're going to welcome it with open, with open arms in standard. Um, it's pretty simple. You play it down, and you get a supporter. Uh, because it's a Pokemon too, I mean, you. it seems like it'd be more limiting than just a regular VS Seeker, but... It's searchable, like a, a Pokemon is searchable. So it's like you can search via Seeker. So this card is very, very good. It might even be the best card from this set, and I haven't even checked all of it yet. Very, very good indeed. And it's blown away attack. You may shuffle this Pokemon all cards back into the deck. So 50 for 2, and then it goes back in the deck. Yeah, a nice little Uxie attack here, just to shuffle this ability Pokemon back in the deck. Reuse that shit again. So, very good Pokemon, for sure. Next up, we got the Applin and Flapple. Uh, we got the other, like, Apple Evolution on the previous set, the dude that's like a turtle. We got the Flyer here. So, this little guy, Withdraw, that's it. Flip a coin, prevent damage, 40 HP is fucking low. And then the Flapple, Flap Apple, Flap Wings Apple. You got Apple Drop. Once turn your turn, you may place two damage corners on one of your opponent's Pokemon. If you do, shuffle this Pokemon. Wow, and all shit back in the deck. Come on, man. Come on, it's a bit harsh. I mean, the effect to place two damage corners on a Pokemon, it's pretty freaking busted. So, yeah, if this isn't a stage two or something like um, how the... Uh, not Rowlet, Decide IGX was. Obviously, yeah, it'd be busted, but shuffle this back in the deck. Seems too much, like it'll ruin it or something. People might try and find a way to use it, but... What it's probably going to be is that you're going to use the ability, put to damage counters, and then shuffle this back in the deck, and then promote something like a wall, like something like Trevenant, let's say, give that item lock in expanded or um, Wobbuffet, or just a Pokemon like that, like even the Lily Doll, once again it comes up, which is sad, because that card is it's been a bitch enough in standard already, I'm sick of it, sick of those troll decks, but that, that's the only thing I can think of, because putting this back into the deck, it's a hefty cost, and then Acid Bomb, flip a coin, if it has Discord Energy, just 2 for 60, Okay, whatever. I guess it can do a little bit of damage, too. Yeah. Now, what would have made it a lot better, I feel like, is if the effect worked at the end of your turn. Like, let's say you could attack for 60, and then flip a coin, and maybe discord energy, and then at the end phase, you put damage, two damage counters, and then go back in the deck. And maybe that's kind of busted, but that would have made it definitely very, very good. Okay. Next up, we got Ninetales V. I actually read this card, but I forgot what it does. Or I think I read it. I don't remember. Uh, okay, it does show us. Very, very nice. Ninetales. Popular Pokemon. One of my favorites, too. It's kind of sad. I mean, they keep giving the same old Pokemon special cards. I don't understand it. Oh, I got Shape Shift. Select one of your opponent's active Pokemon attacks and use it as this attack. Okay. Busted attack confirmed. God, this is pretty powerful. Um, I mean, okay, it's uh, it, it's got to be the active Pokemon. Okay, so that balances out a little bit. But, you know, this kind of attack it can always have some nasty, nasty implications because... You don't pay the cost. It doesn't say you pay the cost and stuff. You just select an attack and do it. Three isn't, isn't that expensive. I guess it's okay. It's fair. And then a flamethrower. 180 for four. And then you discard an energy attached to this Pokemon. Okay, it's whatever. Um, you can't even use triple acceleration since you're basic. Uh, 200 HP. 
decent, I guess. V, V Pokemon, and then to retreat. I mean, I guess maybe the fire decks would use this as a tech to use shapeshift, kind of like how the uh, Mimikyu tech used to work. The one that uh, the fairy one that has a psychic one too, from Great from Guardians Rising. Maybe, maybe it might be used as a tech for shapeshift. Other than that, can't think of anything else. Then we got Magmar and Magmortar. That's what's up. I hope it's going to be a good card, but knowing my luck, it's not going to be good. Like, uh, I've been disappointed too many times at this point. So this guy looks pretty weird. It's like it's bending to use that flame attack. Uh, what the fuck does this remind me of? Uh, anyway, uh, nothing really special. And then Magmortar here. 140 HP, stage 1. I guess it's okay, not really, anyway. Burst Punch, 30 for 2 and then burn. What, 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 the, what the fuck is this? Like, what the hell is this? Dude, are you serious? I swear to God, I think there's like an Entei that does this. Same thing, or maybe he does 20 for 2 and burn. Fuck me. I It just... It, it's like they're doing it they're doing it on purpose. It's like they're, they're making sure that let's make the regular Pokemon ass and stuff like Arceus just doesn't have to worry ever. <sighs> anyway, and what about Ground Burn? 80 for 3. Each player discards the top card of their deck. This attack does 100 damage for each energy card discarded this way. So, yeah, it, it's pretty much a carbon copy of uh, Entei. And there's an Entei that has this attack too. Who the fuck has this attack? Like, Camrep usually has this type of effect. I mean, anyway, it's not even that good. So if you discard, let's say you stack your deck with the Macargo, okay? And you're going to dump an energy. I mean, you do 180 for 3. Okay, good. If your opponent dumps 1-2, then it's 280. So all of a sudden, it becomes crazy good. But if you don't do that, and if you don't combine it with Macargo, then 80, if you combine it with Macargo, 180 for 3 is not bad, but it's not groundbreaking either. I mean, fucking Moltres from, I think it's Team Up or one of those uh, recent sets, not even recent. You can do 180 for 4 and you discard 3. It's just a basic Pokemon, you know? So... It's not like 180 is bad damage, but it's not the crazy good damage it used to be in the black and white era, where it was the magical number to get KOs on EX Pokemon. So I don't know, maybe 180 for 3 is still good enough, but it means you're definitely using a Pokemon like Macargo, stack your deck. That card is going to rotate out too with the next rotation. I think that's how it's going to work out. Um, yeah. And... I don't know, you're just relying on luck for your opponent to dump an energy too. Maybe if you try and stack their deck as well, but anyway. Moving on, I wasted enough time on you. Uh, we get a Chandelure in here. Another card that got a print recently. What the hell? Got Litwick, a bunch of Litwicks here. Uh, chilling. What are they doing? Opponent's active Pokemon is burned. Okay, not bad. Yeah, Lapind. Top entry, when you draw this card at the beginning of your turn, you put this card on your bench. Okay, so this is the same, it's the same ability that uh, Lombri had. So I don't know, maybe they're going to give us like a supporter or it, give us something that's going to work some sort of a deck out or archetype out. I don't know, like the Night March stuff, Lost March stuff. Because they have the same ability, and this usually doesn't happen unless they're trying to make an archetype of sorts. Anyway, and they're in new. Attach a far energy from a discard pile to this Pokemon, 1 for 20. Okay, that can be something. And then the Chandelure. This guy has bad 140 HP. That's very low for these days. And to retreat, and you got Protective Lamp. Each of your Pokemon that has any energy has no weakness. Barely matters because this guy's going to die in one shot in all probability. 
And if he doesn't, and you use this to protect your other guys, I am stage two. Maybe it'll come up in some decks. It's not like we have a lot of very great ways to get rid of weakness. I think there's a weakness energy, and that's about it. And then Mirage Flare, uh, 110 for 2 and Confusion. Weak. What can I say? Okay, we got Heat more for the last Fire Guy. It does Lick, whatever, Paralysis, and uh, Flamethrower, 120 for 3, Discard an Energy. You know, <laughs> it's it's almost kind of funny. This is the kind of attack that Reshram did in the first black and white set. We've come such a long way since then and barely any improvement. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, it, for, on the one hand, it's good because I'm not a fan of power creep. You know, it's just I wish there was a way to fix power creep but there isn't at the same time though if you're gonna keep improving the GX's and the V Pokemon regular guys need to improve too so not very impressive uh, once again Moltres is stronger than this anyway you got Wingle and Pelipper I feel like these guys yeah they got a print in Celestial Storm but it feels like an eternity since I've seen them I don't know why you got collect draw a card and then Pelipper, you got Wing Attack, 50 for 2, the Power Cyclone, 110, move on energy, okay, bullshit. Uh, it's too bad, the art is, is kind of nice. You got the background beach here, reminds me of the beaches in my town, very good. Okay, oh, fuck me. Okay, I'm very happy about this, they're finally giving a different Pokemon something, Milotic, yeah. So, God only knows when was the last time Milotic got a special card. Like, the shiny one in Supreme Victors, or fucking the Milotic EX from EX Emerald. So, this is pretty nice. Okay, so finally. Uh, looks pretty awesome. Milotic, Milotic, one of my favorite water Pokemon. Um, cool stuff, for sure. 210 HP. Okay, okay, good start. Uh, typical lightning weakness and a typical to retreat. Uh, question is, what do your attacks do? So, Aqua Impact. Uh, this attack is 50 more damage for each energy in your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. Okay. So, this might be something. So, it's it starts for 10. Uh, usually, most Pokemon have at least one retreat. So, it's like 60 for 3. That's not good. Uh, if they have two, then it's um, uh, one one ten for three. That's not good either. If they have three, it's one sixty for three. It's starting to get somewhere. And four, you're doing very good damage. Two ten, you're getting significant white knockouts. So this card, if you're gonna use it. In my opinion, you have to use it with some of those Pokemon that boost the, your opponent's retreat. Like, Abzol does this. Um, there's like an Alolan, oh, not Alolan, but like a, a Muck. Team Aqua's Muck that does this, I remember. I think there's like a Ductrio that does this. There's a bunch of Pokemon that do this. I mean, most of these cards that I mentioned are rotated out anyway, but... You gotta do something like this if you're gonna make use of Aqua Impact. And then it's Hypno slash Attack... It just does 154. Oh, come on, man. Four? Four? Not even three? Pretty weak and instant sleep. So I'm not even that surprised, even though I sound surprised. I just know in my heart they always do this to me. They, they, give, they give me a card that I like, like a Pokemon that I really like. They make a card out of it, and they always got to make them bad. I mean... Just think about when was the last good Salamence card we ever got. Just think about that for a minute. Jesus. Anyway, so Hypno Splash. I mean, the instant sleep. Yeah, it could save your ass having this when you do high damage, but it's not good, especially for four energy. If anybody's going to use this Pokemon, it's probably going to be for Aqua Impact, and you need to find a way 
to boost your damage. Otherwise, it's going to be weak. Yep, yep. I wonder how the full art's going to look, though. I mean, this is fucking nice. Gotta fucking love this majestic Pokemon. We got Ty Tim Pole. Spin. Just confusion. It looks so fucking sad here. It looks like it's sad. It's lonely. We got Papa Toad. Sup dog. Spin sign. Uh, also confusion. Okay. And then the Seismitoad. This guy, they've been giving him a lot of prints. Too like this. There's been a few other recent ones, I think. You got spinning punch. Your opponent's active Pokemon is confused, but you do damage too. And then resonance 120 for four. If your opponent's active Pokemon is confused, 240. Um, that's actually you know what? Like, if they brought this card out before the damn Nihileko got retreated, got rotated, then maybe we could have had a, a fun little tier 3 deck here. Like, you play the Nihileko down, you confuse the opposition, and then you, like, maybe use something like the um, uh, Donovan Sacrosma with, like, the Air Balloon, you retreat, you put this guy out, and then you can do 240 for 4. That could have been cool. You know, if the choice band was around, that's 270. We could have had a deck. I mean, like this, you kind of have to use it with his own attack or just find another way to compute, confuse the opponent. I mean, is there a Pokemon that does this like a stage one? I mean, in Expanded, there's the... Uh... Shit, who the fuck was it? I think Among Us does that. There's an Among Us that does that. It gives poison and confusion. Perhaps some other Pokemon. But yeah, you gotta do something like that to get the plus for this guy. And I mean, 240 for 4. The damage is solid, but it's an expensive energy cost either way. Uh, Garchomp can do almost exactly the same for less energy, so... Yeah. Anyway... We got Galarian Darumaka. Gotta love these guys. Just such a smart sort of Pokemon form. Giving us this the snow version of that guy. And uh, this guy's Ice Punch. Okay. And Dermanitan. Cool. This guy does Blizzard. 80 for 3 and 10 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Yeah, not impressive at all. And Frosty Headbutt, uh, 170 for 4, and can't use Frosty Headbutt. So, I guess, okay, this guy is trying to make some sort of statement. You know, both attacks, they can seem a bit pressuring, I guess. You do 80, but you can spread on everybody. 170 for 4, okay, and then 140 HP. He's trying to make a statement, but once again, is this card going to do anything in the format? Probably not. Sad. It's it's sad though. And let's see, we got Esk. I don't like this Pokemon to be honest. It seems it seems pretty it almost seems like a troll design. It seems like uh like some sort of meme design. I don't know how to explain it. Like I don't know, like ice cube for a face. It it just seems like this is some sort of a penguin from pingu and then they just put this ice cube on it i don't get it like i'm all for realistic animal designs in pokemon but you gotta it has to sort of speak to me and this doesn't speak to me here anyway and you got ice face um quite um what's the word uh, uh what's that word Anyway, this Pokemon has full hit points. Your opponent's Pokemon attack deals 60 less damage. So I guess because it has 120 HP, which is actually pretty big for a Pokemon like this, it doesn't look like it. But yeah, 120 is, is still high. If it's full, it's like it's 180. They gotta do like 180 to kill it. So I guess it's a useful ability to make it take a hit. 
Fitting. Yeah, it's a fitting ability name. And Blizzard, 70 for 3. And 10 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Okay, so, so this, since this dude is a basic, this is better than what the Galarian uh, Dermanitan does. And it just goes to show you once again, I mean, almost the same attack, just 10 less damage. The dude did 80, this does 70. But this is a basic Pokemon. Motherfucker. Anyway, so maybe this might make a good little water tech in Ice Moth decks if they want to put it in. I don't know. We have other options. Got Voltorb and Electrode. Okay. Continuous tumble shit. Uh, looks kind of cool. They give us some original art for once with this guy. And Electrode. 90 HP for retreat. Ball gather. Search your deck for up to 3 energy. Reveal them and put them into your hand. Uh, nobody's going to want to do this in an evolved Pokemon. And then rolling attack. Once again, some bullshit. So, wasted opportunity. They could have given us, like, some sort of electrode with an ability that blows up, gets energies. I know we've seen this a million times in this dude, but it's all he's good for, really. Uh, it's his trademark. And unfortunately, to my disappointment, like, nobody really managed to make very good use of the Electrode GX. Even though it had potential, but... It's just, once again, because you couldn't attach them on... GX Pokemon and EX Pokemon, which was, which were the only Pokemon, GX Pokemon, the only Pokemon that basically see any use as attackers. It couldn't be used. It wasn't like how the Electro DX worked uh, back in the OG days of the EX era. Anyway, we got Electro Buzz and Electro Vire too. I guess to go with Magmar. Okay, so this guy doesn't do anything special. And Electivire, uh, you got Thunder Shock, and uh, it does 50 for two, maybe Paralysis, and then Power to Volt. This Pokemon has a special energy attached to it, 180 for three. I mean, I guess you could attach like a draw energy or just find a way to squeeze a special energy to get that plus, but it's not great. It's just, uh, once again... He seems like he's trying to make a statement. Hey, I might be good. Use me. But not really. Oh, well. Uh, this art is kind of ugly, too. What the fuck is this? You know, angle. It kind of zooms in. Anyway. Next, we got a Shinx and Luxury line. Now, actually, I, I'm aware of this card existing, like this new line, because I'm currently writing a, a Luxray TCG overview. I'm trying to get those videos out sooner. But, uh, you know, they take a long time to make. And I don't always have the time. But anyways, so I didn't read them, though, yet. I, I kind of, I wanted to save my thoughts on when I was going to check them out for the first time. But anyway, let's look at Shinx. Adversity, if your opponent has three or fewer prize cards. Yeah, 50 more damage, so it does 60 for one. This could come up, like, um, uh... We've got three or less prizes, 60 for one, okay. Got Luxio, top entry. Yeah, once you draw this dude, you get to... Yeah, it's the same thing as Lombri, in fact. Yeah, Lombri and Lampant. You can evolve instantly. Yeah, and then the Luxray, kind of going to spoil that. Spoil me the surprise, but we've got to review it since I'm making this video. Got 160 HP, one retreat, so solid stats, I suppose. You got Raid, if this Pokemon evolved from Luxio during this turn. 160 for one. Okay. So. You only get this greatness once, though. And then you just gotta act like Lucario GX acted. Uh, you gotta just devolve it, evolve again to get that extra damage for one. I mean, it, it's pretty damn high, but the problem is Lucario was a stage 1, this guy's a stage 2, so you're seriously going to have to find a way to make use of that Luxio top entry uh, to make use of this dude. Anyway, and then Head Bolt 120 for 2, unimpressive. So I'm not sure how good this guy is going to be. Probably not very, but 
I think they're probably going to do something with these top entry dudes. Uh, maybe they're going to give us a trainer. I got to keep going, I guess, in the set. We got toxicity. To to toxicity. I always have. It's a pain in the ass trying to say this guy's name. Uh, toxic. Toxicity. Toxicity. Fuck you. Anyway. You got poison jab 20 and poison. That's actually not too bad because it's instant poison. You don't have to flip a coin and shit. Electric Riot. If your opponent's active Pokemon is poisoned, this attack does 90 more damage. Some pretty obvious synergy here. And even though it's 3 energy, you know, lightning, you can get to that easier thanks to stuff like the Thunder Mountain, thanks to Tabu Koko Prism, you know. Uh, there's even Magnezone for <laughs> the jackasses like me that would use that. So... It's, it won't be impossible to get those energies on, what I'm trying to say. And 180, you always have the Electro Powers too. The Poison, Poison Jab. Maybe something, but I don't know. I feel like Tabu Coco V is pretty much better. I mean, it's got 200 HP, but Free Retreat, this guy has too. I don't know. I think I like Tabu Coco V better, but maybe this guy's on the same league anyway. I guess a VMAX though, so that's a plus. So if it's, it's actually, the first form is pretty solid uh, if it gets a VMAX too. And uh, usually from the other Pokemon I've seen that get like a VMAX, they're not too great. Like Lapras V is good, Stone Journer. Yeah. So let's see what you do. It's got huge ass 320 HP. Looks like some sort of a... What do you remind me of? It's like he's in the Greninja family or something. Anyway. Frog dude. Toad dude. You got G-Max Riot. Same thing. Anyway. Uh, if your opponent's active Pokemon is poisoned. 240 for 3. So, is the same... I think it's the same... No. is um different ass name. But... You're going to do 240 for 3. I guess it's okay. I mean, obviously in Expanded, you got to remember you can use stuff like Hypnotoxic Lasers, making this guy get more value in Expanded. Mm -hmm. With Electro Powers, I guess you can get some one-hit knockouts, to be honest, with a little bit of setup. I mean, get this dude ready, play a laser, play a Electro Power, you're doing 270 with the laser, that's 80. That's 280. You knock out some Tag Team GXs. You play another Electro Power, that's a one-hit knockout on anything. So, has potential. Lightning Pokemon, obviously you can pair this with Zekrom and stuff. Um, depends on how long those guys are going to stay in the format too. But yeah. So, okay. Good card, I suppose. Uh, you got more Peko. Man, there's some crazy ass wind outside and it's fucking up my door too. Shit. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear the noise, but there's some crazy ass wind outside. And even though I have like everything closed, like the windows and stuff, it's like the air still comes in somehow. Uh, anyway. More Peko. Does Taunt. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. Can't use that attack. Okay, this can be useful. And then Spark. 50 for 2, and then 20 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Mm. To be honest, what disappoints me is the HP. I mean, since it's one of those electric rodents, I mean, like Pikachu and stuff, they usually don't have high HP. So, uh, yeah. But uh, it doesn't have Nuzzle. It doesn't have, uh, I, I don't know, to work with them. But... 70, so I guess it's like 70 for 2. Okay, whatever, I suppose. With the Thunder Mountain, you can do this for 1 energy. You know, th th these kinds of attacks, though, just, they don't really do it anymore. Like, once upon a time, a Pokemon like Buzzle GX, doing like 30 and then 30 to a bench, that was hot. And even before it got rotated out, it stopped seeing play. 
in favor of other Pokemon. So it, it's it's not it just doesn't do it. it it's good. It, it's kind of good if you compare it up with something big later, but yeah, it's probably not going to do anything in the format. And Clefairy and Clefable. Okay, so these are psychics to go with what they said uh, about getting rid of the fairies. Now, I'm not going to lie. This Clefairy does look good as a psychic card here, but... Yeah, I don't know how I feel about them getting rid of dragons and then changing everything up. It's one thing to get rid of fairies, that's whatever. But dragons too, you better do something cool with them uh, before I make my final judgment. It's got Shining Fingers, Instant Sleep, and then Magical Shot. Okay. And then Clefable. Um, mm, this one looks okay, I guess, too. Uh, you got Playfulness. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve, you may choose an energy attack and return it to the top of the deck. Fuck this ability. Fuck this ability. <sighs> I've been hating on all of the disgusting, stupid, annoying troll decks that either try to run you out of energies, try to run you out of cards from your deck, deck you out, mill you out, trying to just, you know, the Uranguru decks, the fucking Clefairy doll, Lily doll decks, just any sort of that bullshit tactic. I'm sick and tired of them using Lieutenant Surge, using all that bullshit. It's just, there's a billion ways to build them. In standard, even more trillion ways in expanded. I'm fucking sick of them. And they keep getting support, keep getting stuff they can use. This is pretty much people are gonna see this and say, okay, you know what? Build a deck around this. Use this, use the evolution spray, and just energy removal. It it stacks this on top of your opponent's deck too, which it basically creates locks, what it does. Why do they make abilities like this, especially when they know what the card pool is? Like, if they know, okay, you know, there's a limited sort of card pool for this to be exploited. Okay, whatever. But those decks are so strong as it is. And they just gave them this card, too, to work with. So, I, I don't like this. I don't like these kinds of effects. It just fucking, I hate them. Anyway, I just bitched long enough. But yeah, is this going to be a good card in those troll decks? Yeah, it, it's going to find a place in those decks. It's going to probably make a deck around this ability itself, around this Pokemon itself. And it's going to suck for everyone else that just wants to play regular-ass Pokemon. <sighs> okay, Sigilyph. Got Counter-Attack. So when this active Pokemon takes damage... Place three damage cards of the attacking Pokemon. Okay, so I guess this can be used as a wall. This is like a Rocky Helmet effect. Three damage is a lot. So, not bad. 110 HP. It might take a hit. If it takes two hits, then it's great for you. And then Psycho Damage. It does 30 for two. And then 10 more damage for each damage card of your opponent's active Pokemon. So, it kind of synergizes with the ability. And, I mean, even without the ability, you know, this sort of effect... Like, if you use this with Galarian Obstagoon, which is already proven a decent card, you can do some high damage. I mean, you know, 30, they have like 5 damage counters, that's 80 for 2. So, okay, it's not the greatest damage multiplier, but it's just a basic Pokemon. It's got this good ability, too. So, it's a good card. Uh, this sort of desert area, too. A nice sort of background artwork, once again. Nice. Final Resistance. Good one retreat. It's not a bad card. Okay. You got Sandy Gast and then Palo Sand. Uh, you got Sneaky Helmet. Put one damage counter on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Right. They also made this guy Psychic too, but I guess this guy's Ghost, yeah. Okay. Happened before. Oh god, my breath. So you got 140 HP. Big ass treat and sink in sand. Discard the top card of your opponent's deck. If this Pokemon has Curse Shovel attached to it, discard two more cards. Okay, so Curse Shovel, there's probably some sort of a tool they made that just works with this guy, stuff like that. They do this all the time now with these specific tools. 
But mill, mill dude guy, another dude that's not great to see. We already have enough annoying ways to mill our opponent's deck. At least as a stage one. And then super absorption, 90, and then heal 30, whatever. I just hope I don't get annoyed when I see that curse shovel, but I have a bad feeling about it. Okay, then we got Hatina. This is how you say it, right? Uh, Hatina, Hatena. Find a friend. Search a Pokemon, put it into your hand. Okay. We got Hatram. Um, yep, yep. Calm Mind and Brutal Swing. Okay, nothing. Nothing groundbreaking. And Hatterene, Hatterene, Hatterene. There's a billion ways to pronounce this that make it sound nice. But yeah, this is like uh, the type of Pokemon they make to look at kind of humanoid anyway. 150 HP, find a resistance to retreat. So, I mean, it's not the worst HP when there's guys that have 140, but you need at least 160 these days, and even that is not enough. But it seems it has like a cheap attack, so let's see. So its ability, Mind Hat, once turn your turn, you may have both players discard a card from their hand. Dangerous ability, dangerous interaction. But at least this is stage two, and you gotta discard a card as well. And Mortified Drop, put one damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon for each Pokemon in your discard pile. So this is like the opposite of what the Sajiko Recorio from Guardians Rising did. You control the damage, it's your discard pile. In Expanded, obviously, you're gonna try and use this with the Battle Compressors and, you know, discard Pokemon with Ultra Balls and stuff. I mean, you're gonna need a lot of Pokemon to make this do good damage, though. I mean, if you just, if you have 10, it does 100. It's gotta be the active, too, so even though it's a put damage effect, you can't spread it. It would have made a good, if you could have spread it, it would have been good, even if uh, you couldn't do, like, crazy good damage. But... Yeah, it's the active, doesn't go on the bench. Mm. If you got like 15 dudes, that's 150 for one. So, I don't know, it's like... I think they should have just made it, you can put the damage anywhere, like spare it around. Or just target the bench too. Like even if you gotta put everything on one Pokemon, you can target something on the bench. That would have made it a really sweet card, in my opinion at least give it that flexibility but who knows maybe I'll use it if I get it maybe people are gonna try and use it I mean just you you guys can just tell me in the comments and just ask yourselves what kind of regular ass stage 2 has actually been successful recently like I think Nido Queen from Team Up just did a little bit. I think it just topped or just showed up at high scale events a few times. But that was it. Like what what else was there? I can't think. Oh well. Moving on. We got the milcery here. Little milk milk dude. Yep, yep. They should have just made like a milk Pokemon, not like a cream Pokemon. I would have liked that better. Uh, but I guess this is the milk Pokemon, and El Creamy is the cream evolution. Uh, but this guy doesn't do anything, so we got the El Creamy with the strawberries. We got Decorate, Decor or Decorate, what am I saying? Decorate. Go nuts. Anyway, attach as many basic energies from your, di from your hand to your Pokemon here where you like. Cool. So this is the same attack, or a very similar attack, to how the uh, Dragonair from Sun and Moon worked. Now, that had a very specific use back then with Darkrai and uh, Giratina. And I tried to use it and expand it with Primal Groudon, but it didn't work out too well. But maybe people are going to use this, because 
it has much better stats than Dragonair for one, and the best part, you can use any energy. So you don't have the limitation of Dragonair. I think Dragonair, was it compatible with any energy too? I think it might have been. So maybe I'm not remembering right. But obviously what you can do with this is do this in the next turn. Use something like freaking Lady or just find a way to surge a lot of energies in your hand. And then attach all of them to something like... I don't know what the fuck comes to mind. I have no idea. But just some Pokemon that has a big ass attack cost like 5 energies and shit. And then you can use that dude. So who knows? Maybe some people are going to use it. The format is much different now, but it, it's kind of a cool attack. I'm glad they brought, brought it back in this form. Okay, next up we got this Dragapult V. Not very... I mean, I, I just don't like this dude. I think it might be like the worst looking pseudo-legend Pokemon. It just is. I don't... I just don't... I can't think of... Uh, any any other guy that will be worse than this guy anyway so 210 HP one retreat so it has good stats bite 30 for one okay that's not too bad at least you got a reliable first attack to start with and then assault jet 60 for two this Pokemon was in your bench uh, this turn does 80 more damage so this is like the nucleus of pot I guess but it's a basic and the damage is higher too. What the fuck? So it's going to do 140. Now it needs two energies though, not one. So I guess that is a major difference than the Galissapod. Um, they got these fucking dudes looking with those crazy eyes here as well. Distracting. Yeah, crazy, crazy dude. Anyway... Um, will it be good? If it was one energy, I would have said yes. Like even even if it did lower damage or the same damage as Galizapod and it worked with one energy, people would have tried and use it. They would use like the Dunwix, the Crossma. They would put like the Air Balloon and just try and do shit like before. Um, even if it's a different format now, maybe it would have worked. And now. I don't know. I think you need two attachments. I mean, you don't got to evolve, but maybe people are going to try and use it. Maybe. We'll see. I guess a VMAX, though, yeah, so I always got to keep that in mind. Uh, it does shred. Okay. Now, that's something good that I wish more Pokemon, more variety of Pokemon got. Uh, usually, shred, what it does is that it goes through effects. And this is what it does, the same thing. Damage isn't affected by any effects. So that includes abilities, uh, not poker bodies and poker powers. That's old school. But yeah, I was about to say that. Uh, it, resistance is still applied, though, I think. Yeah. Anyway, so it's got that. And it's got max phantom. 130 for 2, and then put 5 damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon any way you like. So that's 180 total, and you get a form of spread too. Now, I think this is a good attack. It's essentially like 180 for 2. And it's not bad, considering this is a 320 dude. You probably get at least 2 attacks off using this guy. Cheap attack costs. Psychic is a good type to be. Um... One retreat. I mean, normally you'd think this guy would have like free retreat since it's so fast in the games. I know that it's a fast Pokemon in the games. I think at 145 base speed, something like that. Um, but yeah, maybe it will be pushing it, giving it free retreat on top of everything else. It's got two good attacks, good HP. Good card, good card. I'm sure people will use it. It combines with the freaking. Spell tax too, since it's a psychic dude, so that's a lot of spread going on. Yeah. Got my dude nose pass. Nose pass tackle rolling tackle. Rolling tackle. Okay. Oh yeah, it's rolling tackle, not rolling kick. 
Got Meditate and Medichamp. Seen quite a few of these two recently. I mean, I understand the Celestial Storm print, but... Yeah, they just gave us quite a few. Not giving Horiyama anything. I made that review recently. Uh, but giving Medichamp some love and not other Pokemon. Okay, whatever. Uh, don't do anything. And then Medichamp. You do Yoga Kick. 40, not affected by weak... Oh, God. Resistance is good. Weakness is bad. And then Psychic. There's 20 damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. This is extremely weak. I don't care if you can use any energy with it. I mean, I guess you can just slap the triple acceleration energy for as long as it's there. And, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll have it around for a while, I think. I think it came in team up. So, we'll have it for more. Uh, shit. So, I guess they've got like two energies. It's a hundred. Sounds about right. Yeah, I mean... Hit something for weak. I don't know. I mean, maybe people will use it as a tech, but I just need I just need something more, something stronger, something that says, "Yeah, get KOs on big guys," or at least pressure them. Anywho, we got Barboach, Barboach, and the other guy. What the fuck is it called? Like Wish Cassie. I almost forgot. How could I forget a Gen Three Pokemon? Razor Fin. Okay, and then Whiskash. Submerge. As long as this Pokemon is on your bench, prevent all damage under this Pokemon by attacks. So bench barrier just for his for his own ass. And then Earthquake. 140 for two. And then 20 to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. I'm glad it doesn't hit your guys, because normally when I see this, I'm thinking to myself, okay, to make it shit, what they're gonna do is they will make you hit your guys too. But, I mean, with Bench Barrier, I guess you could block it anyway. Uh, it's good, though. 140 for 2. Um, when you spread on your entire opponent's bench, that's not bad. I mean, if they don't use Mew to block it, it'll add up. It softens them up, at least. With Deancey, it goes to 160. So, this is actually not bad, especially considering this is just the Stage 1, so... You know what? I feel like there must be some error here. I think he might be hitting like everybody, hitting your guys too. Because if they give it this ability, it's kind of suspect. But if it doesn't, if it just hits your opponent's guys, then it's just great. If not, then they just give it this ability so that it, it protects the other dudes. Like if you evolve a lot of them, that's the point. But it will add up. It's just a stage 1, 140 HP. A relatively cheap attack. Handy ability too. Could be nice. I mean, I don't know why he's sad here and it's not smiling like in the Mystery Dungeon games. Good old Sage Wish Cash. But yeah, besides his sad mug, it's a decent card. You got the Galarian Yamask. Looking pretty crazy here. Horror Pokemon. Reckless Charge. It's going to hit himself hard, but at least you do 50. And then Galarian Rune Runerigus. It's not even... Um, Cofagrigus. Yeah, Cofagrigus with him. Spreading spri spreading spite for each damage counter on this Pokemon put two damage counters your opponent's Pokemon any way you like. But it only has one hundred HP, so you're not gonna be able to I mean first of all he has to live a hit and then spread. And then Mad Hammer one twenty and you do 30 to yourself. I guess to synergize with the first attack. But if you do this, you're just going to die for sure. This is a bad card. Bad design card. What they should have done is probably like flip the attacks around. That's what they should have done. Uh, just gave it more HP or some shit. Whatever. You got Roly Coley. Cold dude. You got two of these. 
Uh, oh no, actually this is the second form. So car call doesn't do anything either. And then colossal, cola, coal, colossal, colossal. Fucked up names in this era, anyway. Tar generator. Once during your turn, you may attack. Oh, 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 shit! I think I'm, I'm seeing something here. Something good. Okay, it says attack, but it probably means attach. One fire energy and one fighting energy from your disco power to your Pokemon in any way you fucking like. Motherfucker. So, my kind of energy acceleration ability. Damn, I've actually been trying to find a way to make use of the Team Magmas camera up in uh, Expanded. There's a few Pokemon you could combine it with, but it's not so great. Essentially, Nekanadal outclasses that guy in every way, but I don't have enough of those. But this dude is going to be freaking fucking hot, man. All you got to do now is just give me a cool, basic Groudon card, and we got a deck. But yeah. You gotta get like a fire and a fighting, so it's kind of like Vega Volt, where you have to get like a grass and a lightning. This is how it was, right? Right. Um, and it's from the discard pile, not from the deck. But this is still an extremely useful ability. There's probably tons of Pokemon you could combine this with. Finally, the Pokemon, like the fighting Pokemon, big ass fighting Pokemon with large energy attacks, get the energy acceleration they need with this like not they need but they appreciate and fire fire energies I mean those guys already have enough support but they can use this too I guess uh, instead of Blaziken but it's extremely useful you get two energies not just one um, you best believe this Pokemon is gonna be good it's kinda like the Rillaboom pretty much but just getting different energies and getting them from the discard pile very, 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 very nice. You got the Phalanx V. Uh, fuck the bass, warm dude. I mean, it, it looks like a warm to me every time I look at it, like some sort of a ground warm. One uh, 60 HP V Pokemon. This dude is freaking weak. Why is it so weak? Let's see the ability. A penetrable formation. As long as this Pokemon is in play, all your Pokemon with Folix in their name take 20 less damage from your opponent's attacks. I see. So what you're going to do is get a bunch of these out, and then with the ability that will stack, these guys become stat. These guys become tanks. So I guess to balance it out, they gave it shitty HP. Not exactly super creative or super groundbreaking but I guess it is still gonna be good if your opponent doesn't negate your abilities if you get a bunch of these out then I mean fuck the freaking wind outside Jesus I don't know if you guys can hear it but like if you get four of these out you're blocking 80 damage so it's it's quite a quite a lot uh, it's like it has 240. Your opponent needs to do 240 to kill it. Anyway, and then Giga Impact. 210, this Pokemon can attack during your next turn. So shitty that you... I mean, you can attack on the next turn, but... Uh, you don't have another attack to fall back to. But at least it's very good damage. 210 with Deancey, strong energies and expanded. This guy is going to get some KOs. So just run a few switches and you should be good. Or have like a way to switch Air Balloon and Donovan the Cross Mount. You could have a deck here. There's obvious synergy with this dude. Now every fighting Pokemon with big fighting energy attacks can use the dude to power up. So there's that. We get another Stone Journer here. Mega Kick. And then Power Press. This Pokemon has at least one extra energy attached in addition. Uh, does 180, but it, it's already pretty costly doing 120 for 4. So, I don't like this very much. Obviously, you can use it with this guy. 
Yeah. Fuck, this wind decided to start popping up now. Got coughing. Nothing. Galarian wheezing. Uh, this might be the first Galarian wheezing, actually. Yeah, I just noticed this. With the mustache and shit. Neutralizing gas. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent's Pokemon in play have no abilities except for this shit. God damn. So, it's it kind of works how uh, the... I think it was Muck. Perhaps Viplume X. I think it was Muck too, but... Like the Mucky X in the Golden Age. But yeah, it, it's not quite Garbodor with the Garbotoxin working from the bench, but it doesn't require a tool. And uh, it's still good. I mean, of course. They should, they probably ha it has a good attack to go with it. So Bat Poison, your opponent's active Pokemon, is now poisoned. Plays four damage counters instead of, of one for poison. So a nice little poison attack too, Crobat style, Crobat Prime style. So, put four instead of one. I mean, it would have been really hot if... Uh, uh, I was going to say Surviper was around from Burning Shadows, but it would have negated its own ability. So, yeah. But you can still use Verbank City Gym, I guess, in Expanded. So, this might be a nice little stage one. People are going to try and use for spread and negation of abilities. Why not, right? I mean, ability negation now... Is not so great when the best Pokemon Arceus can do all of his broken stuff and it's not through abilities. But I'm sure this this card is going to eventually uh, be good or find, find his ways in decks. Just be used in his own deck, what I'm trying to say. Spirit Tomb. What the fuck kind of... This has got to be one of the most horrific arts I've seen. It, it really looks like some sort of fucking... Uh, like uh, Satan came in the world or some shit in form fucking fucked up card <laughs> yeah, it looks too fuck fucking spooky fucking creepy and scary it's just zooming on his face like that making that expression fuck mate anyway uh, 60 HP you do split grudge uh, each player discards the top card of their deck I swear to god this card is distracting me uh, each player discards top card of the deck. Fuck this attack. And then Mortified Drop. Place damage counters your opponent's active Pokemon. Equal the number of Pokemon your disc upon. So. Um, of Pokemon in your disc pile. Okay. Why didn't they writ write it like how the uh, Haterane was written? Anyway. You're going to need a lot of dudes in the discard pile to place damage on your opponent's active Pokemon. Uh, he needs two energies too. This guy has only 6 HP, so he'll probably be, die, be dead most of the time. The deck out attack is what's most dangerous. And this has got to be one of the most fucked up artworks. Like, fucked up artwork with fucked up attacks to go with it. Good combo. Uh, the first attack, I guess, is fucked up. The second one isn't too busted. It doesn't have a limit. But people will probably find it difficult to use. It's like a weaker Night March. Uh, split Grudge though is annoying because the deck got attack. Fuck you. Fuck you Spirit Tomb. It's not that I hate Spirit Tomb, it's just this this particular artwork is definitely fuck ugly. Anyway. Uh, you got Garbodor. Garbodor looks like a pretty Pokemon in comparison to this dude. You got Trubbish. Seems pretty down, pretty sad. Uh, if your opponent's active Pokemon is poison, 50 more damage. Could be something. Then Garbodor. Uh, poison Pile. Once during your turn, if there's a Stadium card in play, you may make your opponent's active Pokemon poisoned. This could be handy too. Works from the bench. Not bad. A new Garbodor with a decent ability. Yeah, the, the, you, there's usually always going to be a stadium card around, and you can just play your own. So this is like a hypnotoxic laser every turn. It's actually not bad. 120 HP, 80 for 3. Okay. What a background. It's like this poison on the ground, like some 
Digimon shit going on anyway. You got Vullaby. Pluck. Discard tools before doing damage. Okay. Then Mandy Buzz. The Vulture. Got Bone Rush for the Bacon until you get Tails. Yeah, 30. Whatever. And then Flip. B blind Side. This attack does 100 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon with any damage counters on it. Snipe. It's 2 for 100 Darkness Energies, but. I don't know, like, it, okay, it doesn't discard energy, it's cheaper, it's regular Pokemon, but, you know, Cramorant has that sort of sniping business covered for the most part. But I guess in some sort of darkness decks, maybe you want to use this. I don't know, I feel like there's a bunch of limitations. The fact that it needs to have some damage counters kind of fucks it up a little bit. I would have rather this did 100 for 2 and just discard darkness energy. Yeah, and just snipe, of course. Anyway, it wouldn't see play anyway. Malamar V. Okay, that's something I wasn't expecting. Just pretty random. Uh, yeah, this guy. You got an EX, too, in Phantom Forces, and you're getting this shit now, too. What the fuck? Where where the fuck is my Cactron V? Where, where is it? Where is my... I don't know, like, uh, shit, sa uh, not Sand Slash, but something like, it's just a random Pokemon, like, Walrun V, or Dugong V, or fucking something, like Grumpig V, or, I don't know, random ass Pokemon, anyway, so, Drag Off, switch one of your opponent's Pokemon, bench Pokemon, the new dude, does 30, whatever, and then Brain Shake, 130 for 3, and then Confusion. Okay, this guy kind of sucks. I don't want to waste too much time on it. Anyway, whatever. Generic. But it gets Malamar VMAX. Oh, wait. Wait. This is Ma Yeah, this is Malamar. Right. Yeah, it was Malamar. But it gets a VMAX too? How the fuck do you get a VMAX? Oh, shit. They pro yeah, they probably just announced this shit or... Yeah, and Serebii updates and I didn't even find out. But yeah, normally if I look at a VMAX, I'm expecting some sort of fucking, like, Gen 8 Pokemon to be getting these. Like, I know Charizard, Meowth, Lapras, and, uh, who the fuck else was it? Barterfree. A few of those Gen 1s got them, but didn't know this one had, had one. Okay, you got Max Disrupt. Look at your opponent's hand, choose a card from their hand, put them at the bottom of their deck, and you do 182. Fuck this attack. Does high damage, and this sort of hand disruption is pretty strong. It's pretty strong, dude. 310 HP to retreat. Yeah, anyway, I'm just trying to kind of rush the video, because this fucking wind is just... Uh, I just feel like the sound quality is shit, but I can't stop the video the way I do it. Uh, well, I could, but it's just, it'll be more of a pain in my ass to edit the shit. Anyway, so Scissor, there's the Scissor for the Scyther, metal guy, obviously. Like, have they ever given us, like, a grass Scissor? Because the dude is technically grass, too. It's a bug steel Pokemon. Uh, long as well since I've seen that, if it ever happened. But this guy, what it does is uh, you do raid. If you play this card to evolve uh, Scyther during this turn, 120 for 1. Okay, so I guess this is your fucking Galissapod attack if you want to do that with 1 energy. And then Guard Claw, 90 for 3. And this Pokemon takes 30 less damage. So it's pretty much copy-paste Galissapod on a stage 1, regular stage 1. Way to go, the Pokemon Company. Way to go. It's like they're not even trying. Uh, the art looks kind of slick. It's like this dude is uh, like a superhero flying or some shit. Anyway. HP is decent. Uh, resistance to grass. Metal guy, so you can attach stuff like Frying Pan too to make it last longer. Uh, only one retreat. It might see play. But it's it's if it evolved, not if it was on the bench and went in the active position. 
Yeah, so it's more like Lucario GX instead of that guy. Okay, so. Probo Pass. Uh, looks like he's about to do some heavy magic shit here from this art. You got Magnet Drop. This attack does certain damage for each energy. Opponent's active Pokemon's are tree cost. Okay, so if they got this too, they probably have some shit. We'll see. Uh, 10 and 30 more for each retreat cost. So, okay, and heavy impact, 120. Whatever, 140 HP. Durant. Bait, gather. Search your deck for a trainer equal to the amount of energy attached to this Pokemon. Reveal them and put them into your hand. Then shuffle your deck. Shit. So I guess you can get more than one trainer with this if you have more energies on, but it's pretty much suicide and try and do this. Anyway, and then 80 for 3. I mean, it has 100 HP. It's not completely a weakling for Durant, but it's still probably not going to take hits. And then you got Cooper, Cooperajavi, Cooperajavi. Yeah, these names are crazy. Adamantine, Adamantine, Adamantine Press. Yeah, way to remind me of uh, Castlevania Curse of Darkness. Been missing that game. Longing for a game like that again. Anyway, uh, 90 for 3. And then, yeah, it blocks damage. Why am I not surprised? And then rack down, 180 for 4. And that's about it. I think I saw a VMAX, though. Like, it gets a VMAX or some shit. But anyway, as a metal Pokemon, at least if you're going to tank, it might work. You can put stuff like the frying pan on it. Kuburaja VMAX. Okay, so this dude has 3 or 40 HP. That's pretty freaking hot. As a metal Pokemon, too. I mean, between the metal, the frying pan, the... I think Duck Trio is still around. That blocks damage on metal Pokemon. 10 damage. You have some shit going here. You got Dangerous Nose. If your opponent's active Pokemon is a basic Pokemon, 200 for 3. Uh, this is actually a really good attack. 200 for 3 is freaking high. And 100 for 3, if you're not going to get the drawback. It's not great damage, but at least you're applying pressure. It's not like his ass damage completely. And then Max Hammer, 240 for 4. Conventional damage, high damage. Not bad. This guy is not bad, to be honest. It might see play as another tank dude. Just as another dude partnered with Arceus. Let's just say that. Because anything goes with Arceus these days. I mean, you fucking use Arceus, then you start blocking damage and hitting with this guy anyway. It's crazy. Use the Alolan Duck Trios. Use the frying pan. Use the freaking shit. Uh, Lucario Memolo. Block even more damage on your metal Pokemon. Yeah, good game. You got Snorlax. Why the fuck are we getting another of these? Another one of these? Because we have so many. We got the V Dude recently. Okay, so draw two cards. And then collapse, 120 asleep. It's got high HP though, which is. Could be something for wall strategies. You got Chat Hot. Lucky match. When you play this Pokemon from your hand, you may flip a coin if hits. Put a supporter from your disc cup hall into your hand. Okay, so this gives you the same, the economy effect, I guess, uh, as the. Um, you know what, I'm just going to scroll up and see, because I don't remember. As Eldegoss, yeah. So this is the same as Eldegoss, but it's a coin flip. But it doesn't have the risk of Eldegoss being a V Pokemon, but it has lower HP too. So I don't see why people would use this, besides not having access to the more high-end card, I suppose. Uh, anyway... That's about it. I can't think of anything else. Uh, yeah, the, the, it definitely just screams that 
they're just being really obvious about, hey, you know what? Only the ultra rare cards, the GX, the V cards, they're the hot cards, they're the good cards, and then the common shit is not good, is lesser. They're just being really obvious about it, and I don't like that. I mean, I do believe that rarer cards, you know, the good cards, let's say, should be like the the rare hollows from the set, the GXs from the set and stuff. But they should also be, you know, some weaker cards like that can compete, like regular cards that can compete on the level. Anywho. And we got Pito V and his family, Tranquil, and the other dude, uh, Chirp. Switch your deck for up to three Pokemon with fighting resistance and put them into your hand. So I guess you can get a lot of birds, colorless Pokemon with this. Okay. Tranquil and Pheasant. Razor Wing and Gust. Okay. And then on Pheasant, 150 HP. You don't even have free retreat. Yeah. Air Slash, Discard and Energy. Touch to this Pokemon and it does 150. I guess what you can do is attach the triple acceleration you were gonna discard in any way, but the freaking Needle Queen is stronger in every way. And then Daunt Turning your opponent's next turn defending Pokemon's attacks do fifty less damage and it does fifty for two. Yeah, it is a weak dude. Stuffle nothing here looks like he's eating some are those like berries like cherry che oh no he's not the cherry berry they basically look like uh, the little apple pokemon dude anyway but where um i just i just want to stop and just gaze at this guy because I don't think I'm ever going to get used to his art I I just want to get used to his ass but anyway hammer arm discard the top card of your opponent's deck whatever in the big throw flip a coin in your feds discard your opponent's active Pokemon all cards attached to it at least the cost is big to do this troll attack but yeah not hmm not anything spectacular then you got the squirrel dudes from the UK you got Scovet yeah it just it's kind of funny they decided to make like the squirrels be fat instead of like be more cute and elegant I guess <laughs> and then greed greed end Got a greedy tail. Yeah, this guy's a proud fat ass dude. Uh, once during your turn, you may search your deck for a Pokemon to reveal it and put it into your hand and then shuffle your deck. That's kind of nice. This is once during your turn. It's not when it evolves, so you can continuously use this every turn. So you have a good incentive to get it out. Uh, it's nice. Stuff like tool drop decks, which aren't even anything anymore, could use this or just another deck that. Uh, you want to gather tools, like maybe with nine tails, gather the tools so you can dump them that way instead of relying on battle compressor and stuff like clay, the clay supporter. Not bad, not bad. You know, good, good ability. I don't think we got this ability before, or it's been a long time since I've seen it. And we're finally down to the trainers. Now, we have this, this is a fucking card, but. Let me just go to the scoop up net first. So scoop up net, return from your Pokemon in play, except Pokemon V and Pokemon GX to your hand. Discard all cards attached to that Pokemon. So I'm glad they didn't make this work with V or GX Pokemon. Otherwise, it was going to be the end of Pokemon TCG. Uh, that's, that's what's up. That's real talk. But working with regular Pokemon, I mean, I guess there are some regular Pokemon that have high HP that could make use of this. I don't like that people can use this with um, stuff like Rich Gigas from Crimson Invasion in those, you know, 
you guys remember those Hoopa, Reggie Gigas, Deck Out Decks with uh, Lucimine and Steven, other variants of uh, shit troll decks. Um, I don't know, I feel like if there's going to be this sort of scoop up effects, there needs to be a good cost to them. And not a bullshit cost like discarding energy to play this card. Uh, that's ridiculous at this point. Um, they just should be in supporters, I feel like, in order to be fair. But anyways, at least it doesn't work with V Pokemon or GX Pokemon. But you know what? EX Pokemon can actually use this. Uh, yeah, maybe some EX Pokemon are going to make a comeback in the expanded format. Oh well. Then we got the Nugget. Now, I read this card because uh, I seen it on Poke Beach and it was supposed to be some revolutionary shit. And I do not like it, to be honest. You can only use this card when you draw it at the start of your turn. And draw three cards. So it's like a costless Cheren. Uh, you gotta... You, you gotta draw it at your draw phase at your, when you start your turn. And then you get to draw three instant cards. So the reason why I don't like it is because I don't like luck-based cards that are just hacks cards, basically. And I don't think there's a coincidence we've seen in all of these effects here. They probably have some sort of card that lets you just stack shit easily. Uh, Tool Scrapper is coming back. That's actually really nice. I didn't know about this. This card up to two Pokemon tool car tools attached to your opponent, two Pokemon in play, either yours or your opponent. So this is obviously weaker than a field blower, but this is what they always do. They kind of uh, mix things up, you know, switch things up around. Uh, we had field blower before that; it was the megaphone. Now we get tool scrapper back. It's good, to be honest. I really have been missing form of tool removal in the format. You know, between those uh, Malamar decks with Giratina, between stuff that just uses annoying tools and you can't get rid of them having a cart like this around I think is just healthy like even if it discards one tool I think it's a good card so I'm glad it came back and you can get rid of your own shit too as always next up we got Oleana I think this might be one oh no wait this is the curse shovel first can't forget that shit when the Pokemon card is attached to is knocked out by damage, discard the two top cards of your opponent's deck. Fuck this card. But at least they're giving us the tool scrapper to get rid of these annoying tools. But this is once again something that you best believe you would see in the Ranguru decks and shit. They're gonna put this on fucking shitty cards like the uh, Sandy Gas. I think it was the one that dumped shit. Or just other Pokemon to just help you deck out quicker, even quicker. Oleana, uh, you have to discard two cards from your hand to play this card. Look at your opponent's hand, choose a trainer card you find there, put him at the bottom of your opponent's deck. So this is a fair card in nature, but at this point, between all of the fairly designed cards that the troll stall decks have managed to make essentially broken and banner worthy, I don't like it. So, discard two cards, yeah, hefty cost, but choose any trainer from your opponent's hand and put them at the bottom of your deck. So at least you don't discard it, you put them at the bottom of the deck, but you see your opponent's hand, you get to play around their shit, and you pick any trainer card. You best believe it's going to find its way in the troll decks too. Damn shame. But anyways, uh, we got Dan. Dan? Who the fuck is this guy? Uh, I guess it might be from like uh, the Sword and Shield game. I haven't played the game, so I don't know all the dudes. Draw two cards, then play rock, paper, scissors with your opponent. If you win, draw two more cards. Yeah, so <laughs> this is a funky little effect. Uh, we've seen this before on the Galactic Wager card. And uh, there was some other cards in the Wizards of the Coast era. <laughs> that had this effect and it's just funny I remember Puka talking about these cards and on the Wizards of the Coast era it said if your opponent doesn't know how to play rock paper scissors just flip a coin 
and then on the Galactic Wager, they didn't say any of that shit. So yeah, they assumed <laughs> everybody can play rock paper scissors now. Um, but yeah, this dude is not a good card, of course, but it's a funny card. It's kind of nice that it's around. Uh, at least this isn't completely. It's luck based, but it involves your opponent. You know, they have to get their ass kicked at the rock paper scissors. And it essentially becomes like a coach trainer, draw four cards. Okay, whatever. Uh, wow, we got some special energies here. Interesting, interesting. Okay, we got boss's orders. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon. So Lysander is coming back in this bitch. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. They gave it to Giovanni this time. Yeah, Giovanni is definitely cooler than Lysander, so no problem about that. So this dude is coming back. People will need to be prepared for it. We got the Galar Mine next. Hurry the fuck up. Each player's active Pokemon's retreat cost is two more. Yeah, I knew there was going to be some shit that boosts retreat with all the cards in here. So I guess you use this with Milotic, even though they don't have any connection at all, but you can use this and boost the retreat on Pokemon. It's on every Pokemon as long as they're active, not just basics. Uh, it, it increases your shit too, so you gotta watch out. And you got the speed lightning energy. What the fuck is this? Looks cool. When you attach this card to one of your lightning Pokemon, draw two cards. Ain't this a bitch? Ain't this a bitch? Why did they give a cart like this to lightning Pokemon? Don't they have enough shit? Aren't those Zekrom decks, Turbo decks enough? That's what they aim to be. Anyway, and Horror Psychic Energy, I wonder what the hell you do. When the active Pokemon this card is attached to takes damage, put two damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. It's pretty busted. These cards are busted, man. This is essentially like a rocky helmet, but it's an energy, too. When the active psychic Pokemon this card is attached to uh, put two damage counters, doesn't count as a special energy card. I mean, I would imagine it just provides psychic or doesn't provide anything I don't know like no I mean it's an energy what the fuck am I talking about going crazy and then capture energy when you attach this card from your hand to one of your Pokemon search your deck for a basic Pokemon and place it on your bench wow so this is like call energy when you attach this card from your hand to one of your Pokemon search your deck for a basic Pokemon yeah, so they're bringing call energy back in a way, but just not as strong. Then shuffle your deck. Uh, pretty cool. It's actually better than call energy in a way, because call energy, you kind of had to waste your turn to attack pretty much. I think that's how it worked, yeah. And these are all the cards. Uh, it doesn't have any special full arts in here or any fancy shit. So... To be honest, I didn't, like, there's a bunch of V Pokemon, V Max Pokemon, I guess, that are strong. But I haven't really seen anything that really just screams too busted. Uh, there's just an overall good balance of strong Pokemon, I would say. Maybe the best V Pokemon or best card is Eldegoss. Because it's basically V as Seeker on foot. That's what it is. And, uh, I mean, I like Milotic very much, but it doesn't mean it's a super great card, just because I like it. Trainers, uh, to be honest, I don't like the trainers. Besides the Tool Scrapper, which they're bringing back, and maybe Scoop Up Net being kind of cool, but <sighs> thinking about all the stuff like um, the... Raichu with instant paralysis from Burning Shadows, you know, those kinds of, once again, lock combos. 
I think they shouldn't have made this card scoop up net, but whatever the fuck. But I don't like Nugget, I don't like Curse Shovel. Besides Dan and Boss's orders, I don't like any of these supporters. Galar Mine I like, these special energies I don't like. Capture Energy I do like, I think that's a good card. Necessary for our format, the way it is now. Because Quick Ball isn't enough. This this Capture Energy I think is going to see play in decks, and they're going to play first and try and use this. But I don't like many of these bottom trainer cards. I don't like Nugget, I don't like these luck based cards. Anyways, so I should finally wrap this up and then drink water as I catch my breath. But this is the set guys, like I've said it's going to be bundled with um, some of the other Japanese sets and we're going to get a big ass set, might even be like 300 cards at this point. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this set review, hope you guys subscribe, leave a like, share this video with your friends. Uh, comment down below what your favorite cards are, what do you think is going to be good, what do you hate about this set, and your thoughts in general. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see.